Hi, I'm Mike, and today we start looking at how we're gonna move the meat chickens from the chicken house to something called a chicken tractor. That's our build today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hi there, thanks for coming along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. So a few days ago, uh, my wife, Erin, comes up to me and she says, I need you to build a chicken tractor. I, I don't know how you are with your wife, but when she comes up with an idea or a project and I really have no idea what she's talking about, uh, I just fake it. So of course I said, yeah, I, I can build you a chicken tractor or a, a, a goose grater or maybe even a, a duck combine, I don't know. I just smiled, went along with it, said, yep, yeah, we'll build it for you. And uh, quickly ran to the internet and looked up to see what a chicken tractor was. I know what a chicken tractor is. Uh, I've seen pictures of them, I've seen videos about them. What I don't know is how to build one, but uh, that's part of the fun of being on the ranch is taking a problem and figuring out how to solve it. I know I can build it, I've built plenty of things and uh, uh, over my time here on the ranch. So it's just a matter of building it and then fine tuning it, which is usually how things work. I did figure it out and we're gonna build one today, but the reason why we need a chicken tractor is an interesting one. Uh, for years, we've had chickens here on the ranch. We've had laying hens and we've had geese and we've had ducks and peacocks. And uh, now, here over the last year or so, we actually went down a weird road here where we started uh, selling chickens in our farm store. We've always sold beef, we've sold pork, we've sold vegetables and eggs and baked goods and all that kind of good stuff, honey and beef jerky. But this year we decided to go down the road of raising our own chickens. Last year, uh, we raised and butchered about 200, 250 chickens, and they're really, they're almost gone. So now uh, we've got a hundred or so more in here. I think there's 102, uh, if I remember right, that are in the chicken house here that we have to do something with here in the next couple weeks because they grow up fast. These are meat chickens. Meat chickens are uh, fast growing. They're usually done very, very quickly. And uh, these guys are only about a week old and they, they get big fast. And since they get big so fast, hey, I'm trying to do something. She's trying to lay an egg. So as I was saying, uh, we these chickens grow so fast that we can't keep them in this little tiny area for very long. This is a 12 by 12 uh, area. And of course it's indoors. Uh, they don't get any sun. There's really not a whole lot of ventilation in here. Uh, so, the big thing is that we want to get them moved outside and and we've done that in the past uh, this over this last winter when we had uh, our massive amount of meat chickens we actually did it in the high tunnel that was kind of interesting in the high tunnel they had plenty of room uh actually too much room we probably could have had a thousand chickens in there but obviously aaron's growing in the high tunnel now so uh, we can't do much in there with the chickens, so that's where Erin came up with her chicken tractor idea, which is basically a box that chickens can live in wherever, and you can move it around and, and uh, make use of it uh, wherever you want to put it. So that's what we're going to be building today, and uh, first we have to get some materials, and one of the cool things we're going to do today is actually recycle as much as possible uh, for, the, uh, for the chicken tractor. Last year, we uh, tore out all of our corrals. In fact, these are the new corrals. Uh, these are the new AeroQuip corrals. We tore out all our old corrals last year. All of that wood has been sitting over at the dump just waiting for a useful purpose. And now we've got it just for a, a little bit of it. We're gonna bring it back over to the shop and get to building.
That was fun. Uh, back to work, and uh, we're gonna start building this chicken tractor. And uh, like any tractor, it has four wheels. Uh, it has a cab that a bunch of chickens are gonna be able to hang out in. But one of the first things we have to figure out is how big does it really need to be? This is the project list. Uh, it's a list of stuff that has to be done on the ranch. Eventually, sometimes things leave here on the project list for a long time. Sometimes we get them off really quick, but it's definitely something that not only the kids can use to draw on, but has been immensely valuable here on the ranch, especially when you're just looking for something to do. Now we get to use the project list to help us figure out how big we need to make our chicken run, chicken tractor. The general rule is that each chicken needs one and a half to two feet, two square feet of room to get around in. Um, I honestly, <laughs> doesn't seem like much. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually try to make this chicken run as big as possible that we can for now. And uh, then if we have to, we can actually make more and then we can move chickens back and forth in between uh, different runs or whatever, or tractors or whatever we need to do. So here's what it's gonna look like. Um, the chicken tractor is basically uh, gonna be a box. Um, it's going to be, I know that I've got boards over at the, uh, over at the dump uh, that are 16 feet long. So we're gonna aim for 16 foot uh, by 10 foot. That gives us an area of 160 square feet. Take that by two, that should be good enough for 80 birds. I think we'll probably end up building two of these, probably, and uh, splitting it, maybe 50 birds in each one. The general layout of it is pretty simple. Um, come back in here. We have a box. We're gonna build it up like this. Put some wheels on it, some sort of hitch so we can pull it around. Obviously, we don't wanna be too high off the ground, otherwise chickens will sneak out underneath, but uh, if we can get it as low as possible to the ground, we'll be good to go. Uh, we're gonna have to put in a door of some sort at some point uh, so that we can crawl in there um, and what, three, maybe four feet high, uh, something like that. This shouldn't be too difficult, but we'll find out.
driving down this boulevard tonight. Yeah. Playing Coldplay on repeat, watching people on the street as I go by. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open with the wind blowing in my head. Alrighty, so that's the basic gist of it. I've actually, I don't think I have enough chicken wire to finish up the rest of this. Plus I'd like to get it outside anyway uh, to finish putting chicken wire on just because I have a little bit more room to work. So <clears throat> for right now, let me give you a, a quick uh, walk around of this thing. and I'll show you some of the things that I did uh, as we move through that pretty, pretty darn quick. Let's start at the front. All right, so rather than go for a solid hitch, um, I didn't have anything that I could really uh, use for that unless I just built it out of wood. So I'm gonna try this. I'm not really sure if it's gonna work, but uh, this is just a flexible hitch. This thing can just be unpinned, taken off, um, hooked up to a four-wheeler and pulled around. So we have our front door here. This is the only door into the thing trickier to do one-handed than you think it would be. Um, you can get right inside, scoop up chickens, whatever you need to do. I went for a four foot height um, just because I wanna be able to be able to get in there and, uh, and move around. The tires here, I think these are nine inch tires if I remember right. Um, they are uh, with a five eighths bolt through two pieces of plywood and then also, and I, you can't see it in there, you, we might be able to see it on the other tires, um, there is a uh, piece of pipe, three quarter inch pipe that I put through the wood as well to keep the wood from wallowing out uh, with these makeshift axles. On the back of the chicken tractor, I did an enclosed area. This allows the chickens to be able to get out of the sun and also any other uh, any predators or anything like that uh, might provide them a little bit of shelter from there. Here's this back tire, and you probably can't see it on this one either, but there is a piece of pipe that goes through um, that uh, those two by fours or two by sixes. All right, the other issue that I have here is the fact that it, because of the tires, it does sit up off the ground. Um, for that, I'm either thinking some sort of sliding shield that uh, we can lift up and then move down to be able to cover up this little gap here um, when it is out in the field. And if you're sitting on any uneven terrain or anything like that, um, might be a bit of an issue. So here in just a moment, I'm gonna pull this thing outside and uh, and we'll see how she moves. If I did put a solid hitch on the front, we would be able to lift it up just a little bit in the in the, and then only have the back wheels would only be required at that point. And it'd be a little bit easier to take corners with as it sits right now, obviously on the four tires, taking corners is gonna be a, a little bit of a trick with it, but that's, a, that's another thing to take a look at as we move along here. As we wrap things up for today, um, First of all, I wanna thank Aaron and, and, and the kids for coming out and giving me a hand on it. Um, I probably wouldn't have been able to get it done by myself, especially the painting. Uh, this was, uh, what, three, four days to get this all done. Obviously not working on it all day long because I have a lot of other crap to do right now, but uh, not bad. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you about was a ridge cap. I don't have a ridge cap laying around anywhere, so I'm gonna have to probably pick one of those up and, uh, and slap it on there. But not bad for a recycled, chicken tractor and not bad for a guy who only a few days ago really didn't know what a chicken tractor was. In all honesty, if you can build something, go for it because you're gonna figure out um, what works and what doesn't work. In fact, I can guarantee there's already comments on this video of people telling me what's not gonna work and they haven't even been around it. 
So you building it yourself, you're gonna be able to figure out what, you, what works for you and what doesn't and what you need to modify because nothing is ever a done deal. Nothing on the ranch is ever one and done. We constantly evolve, we constantly change our plans and we're not afraid to try to tackle new things and see how they work. This will be one of them. And it looks like it just started to snow. So uh, before we move this thing out, a couple other things I wanted to touch on really quick. Um, food wise in here, uh, we're gonna have to figure something out and water as well uh, for, the, for the meat chickens. Luckily, they're still pretty small. They're not able to move into here yet, which is actually nice to have something halfway done, mostly done, three quarter of the way done ahead of time. So we will be able to uh, figure out our water and our food situation in here. I think I'll probably end up doing like the gutter system like I did before with them, uh, where we put some gutters up along the sides that we can fill up from the outside. I think that'll work pretty well. And then of course, moving it through the field, uh, adding nitrogen and, and phosphorus and all kinds of good stuff to the field as we move the, the birds through. They've gotta be moved every couple days and uh, we'll have some time to test that as well before the chickens are ready to get it, go back in. The big thing is that anything like this, you can build yourself. You don't have to be a, a, a rocket scientist or anything else. Um, if you see a need for something, that you, if there's a need for something on the ranch, on the farm, uh, I have no doubt that farm ingenuity will figure it out. And it's always a trial and error. Somebody may think they have all the answers and they know exactly how all this should work. I guarantee you they don't, especially in your unique situation. So thank you guys, I appreciate it. I'm gonna get this moved out and uh, we'll go check on the chicks one more time and we'll call it a day. The truth. Also, just to let you know, there are some people working around the shop here. I've got some electricians that are here uh, putting in a new, uh, a new outlet for me. But So you might see them, so I'm sure that question will come up. Anyway, we're going to pull this thing out and see if it falls apart. Holy hell, <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so the thing held together, that's good enough for me for right now. And now that we've got it out here in the open, it'll be a lot easier to finish putting that chicken wire on. So guys, that pretty much wraps things up. The baby chicks are ready to come out in probably, uh, I'm gonna say maybe two, three weeks or so. They've gotta have all their feathers before they can be moved into the chicken tractor. So they'll be happy to be outside. I'll be happy to not have them in the chicken house. And uh, the whole world will keep on rolling right here on the ranch. So. Should be a lot of fun. Make sure you subscribe, follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Uh, 30 and 30 is just around the corner. In fact, I can imagine that during the 30 and 30 is probably when we're gonna be uh, getting the chicks moved out into the, into the chicken tractor. We've got hydrant projects to do during the 30 and 30. We're gonna put in a geothermal hydrant actually. Uh, that should be a lot of fun, and we're going to take a look at the factory where they build them right here in Gillette. So that'll be coming up during the 30-30. Of course, calves, 
galore in the first month of calving as well. So it should be a whole lot of fun. Make sure that you head on over to our website, rwyomonglife.com. Sign up for the newsletter there because you're gonna get behind the, not only behind the scenes footage from the 30 and 30, but you're also gonna get the first shot at tickets for the Ranch Roundup coming up at the end of June when you're invited to come and visit the ranch for yourself and check it out. Just like the baby chicks in here. They're a little chilly hanging out around their, their heat lamps. They probably don't want the snow any more than we do. Said it was 2% chance of snow today. When it's 98%, there's no snow. 2%, we get lots of snow. All right, I'm done ranting and raving, guys. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life. Thank you.